Hey, Fit Pros, before we get to this new episode in the Kips podcast, I want to quickly share about our newest course on Kips, Social Media for Fitness Professionals. This course is all about the fundamentals. As a Fit Pro, you know how fundamental exercises are important for building a foundation within an exercise program, and that's what we're going to be doing in this course. Authored by me, Tyler Valencia. I go through the stats involving all the major social media platforms and then show you step-by-step how to do it. In the first lecture, I built a fictitious business branding kit with a new logo, color wheel, and font. And then we use those to set up new Facebook pages, start a private group, how to use Creator Studio, set up a basic Facebook ad, set up an Instagram, how to post on Instagram, and how to set up a YouTube channel. We do it all in this course, and one of the best parts is you can get your continuing education credits. Head to the link in the description to find out more. Let's get to the show. Welcome to the best of October 2022 in the KIPPS podcast. My name is Tyler Valencia, and I am the president of KIPPS and Time to Train Fitness. This is going to be another quick one but an impactful one. Uh, It's going to be impactful because I'm actually going to start with a little rant, a little fitness rant that other fitness instructors can probably relate with. Scrolling through social media, I saw this post about how running or walking is not exercise. And what really caught my eye with this and probably most fit pros will relate to is that the overwhelming majority of people in this universe, in this country, do not exercise, the overwhelming majority. That is the population that often doesn't get thought about as much as it should. It's because it's probably harder to get to, or it is harder to get to. Let me correct myself on that. It is harder to get to. And most people find themselves fighting for that population that's going to the gym. They're trying to either get them to go to another gym or they're trying to get them to come away to away from a gym to come to your business, whether it's a boot camp or a private gym, whatever that is, they're trying to pull that very small population. So this majority that doesn't exercise, if you were to tell them running, walking, things like that are not exercise, then they'll probably even become more confused. The information out there for this population is not as easily digestible. I said this in another podcast episode, I believe, when I was talking about licensure, about how licensure would impact the general pop, if it would make it better for them. And I stated that, is that the best route for them? Because the information out there for them is not as easily digestible. Because if I was to say you're supposed to do moderate to vigorous activity on most days, what does that even mean for them? Where do they even start? Is there maybe even a way for them to get easier information so that nothing's being sold to them? They don't feel that they have to buy anything, that they can go to it risk-free, and all of a sudden, they can start working on their health? Those are the things that I think we need more information out there. Not trying to say things to get people to click on your link, to follow you, those types of things. And so I might be pointing at one thing that caught my eye, and it's very rare that I will see things that maybe I'll include in a podcast that I saw off social media, but I thought this was a good one because it's a almost an evolution for fit pros out there when they start to realize that they're working in this industry and they see that, oh, I need to empathize better with my clients. How do I connect with them so that they know that it's not just intense, 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 Hard, 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 push, 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 push. Of course, those things are important. The motivation, creating environments that help them push and get outside of their comfort zone. But at the same time, making sure that we empathize with them and understand that their situation is much different than ours. Because if you join this industry, there's an overwhelming majority or overwhelming chance that exercise is already part of your life. It's ingrained in you. If you don't exercise for one day, you feel weird. You feel awkward. You feel like something's off. And the overwhelming majority that doesn't exercise, those are things that how can we connect with them? What can we do to help them and create an environment that gets them on that path? 
a healthier path in within their comfort zone. So that's my little vent right there to get this episode going. And I'd love to hear what other people think about that because how do you go to that? How do you connect with other instructors to help them share that information or maybe even guide someone that's joining the industry to say, hey, when you join this industry, the overall majority does not exercise. How can you make that impact? That's going to be whoever can do that. They have the golden ticket, in my opinion. So let's now get to the admin work of the episode. As always, we go through the prior months, October, top 10 cities. And I'm going to start at the bottom here. And one of my favorites, I'm going to say one of my favorite wine spots, Los Olivos, coming at number 10. Number nine, Chandler. And I should have said this from the beginning. The global cities come in big with the top 10 on this one. And we start that off with Stockholm. Next, we have Grand Rapids, Dubai, Bucksport, Frankfurt, Calgary, coming in huge over these last few months, Colorado Springs, and Williamsburg. All great cities that some of them I've been to, some of them are my favorite. I love Colorado Springs. And I'm happy to see that the podcast has a global audience because really we want to help fit pros across the globe. We can create free education that helps them in any capacity. We want to do that. And make sure that if you're listening, drop us a comment on your favorite podcasting platform and review that helps us with getting this out there. And if you ever have a topic that you want to be discussed in one of these episodes, if you, as you've seen, if you're a fan of the podcast, I've been including more of these discussion topics to hopefully help fit pros, entry-level fit pros, and even existing fit pros on topics that might be outside of their comfort zone. And if you have a topic, shoot us an email at info at kipsonline.org with the subject line podcast. Now, this past month, there were two episodes that were discussion episodes, and one of those I already mentioned, and that's the one I'm going to talk about first. And with this roundup episode, the links are in the description so that you can easily go listen to the full episode, digest it, take it in, hopefully comment, share it with another Fit Pro. And that first one that came out last month was about licensure. And I took this one from different perspectives, gym perspective, individual perspective, educational company perspective, and Fit Pros. And the piece that I'm going to share with right now, and of course, there's going to be a clip that I'm going to share from it, but the piece that I'm going to talk about now is the Fit Pro because that one, as I mentioned in, the, in that episode, that's the hardest one for me to digest myself because how do we create these requirements? When we look at other industries, when we look at even other countries, we see that the requirements are definitely steeper. It's harder to become a fit pro. And we also see, you know, potentially that other countries, or <laughs> I'm saying it in a nicer way, that other countries, they respect the profession a little bit more. So in our country, the US, United States, if we were to have licensure, there might be a population that misses out on it or that is impacted in some way. So those are the questions, the thoughts that go through my head with licensure and if it will improve the industry, because the honest answer is I don't know. Will it make it better? I don't know. Will fit pros hopefully have better access to maybe uh, a living wage, better paying? Potentially. Does it create a connection with insurance and that pathway for individuals that do have health concerns that they can use their insurance money to pay for training? Hopefully, that'd be great to see. Instead of them having to utilize any type of medications using exercise, I will share right now that one of the greatest stories that I've had while being a fit pro was when I was running my boot camp and I had a member that was a diabetic and her telling me after a few months that she had less of a dependence on insulin, you know, that gives me goosebumps thinking about it now, talking about it out loud, because those are things that go across multiple levels, that she saves money, she improves her health, she's less dependent on insulin, things that she never thought were possible. And as a fit pro, you want to create those types of stories. You want to help. That's why you join this industry. That's why you go to work every day. You want to help people that way. So will licensure lead to more of those stories? Potentially, hopefully. 
I don't know what and if it'll ever will be. And I'm going to share a clip here from the general pops perspective because that's the one that's probably the most controversial. So I'm going to share that clip right now and hopefully you can share in the private members group or on social media. So with all of this that we're talking about with the individual now, the individual perspective, does better instruction mean it's better? I know that's almost redundant there. Does better instruction mean that it's better for everybody? And let me expand on that. Don't forget that the overwhelming majority of people don't even have exercise on their radar. That's a fact there. The majority of people don't have exercise on their radar. It's not a part of their daily life, their weekly life, monthly. It's just not a part of their lives. So talking about licensure, a big step like that, is it really going to be something that moves the measuring stick? Is it really something that push people to put it on their radar? Is it going to help more people? Is it the better route for them first? Add on top of that, that the overwhelming majority of people don't even go to gyms. So first I said that the overwhelming majority don't have exercise on the radar. Add on top of that now, the overwhelming majority of people don't even go to gyms. So is this a step that is important for them? And let's take it even further now. If there's one piece that I, now here's my feedback here. If there's one piece that I could add into this, that would be, is there a way to provide better credible knowledge to the masses? And this is something that I've thought about over the last month, month and a half, is that it's not really that easy for the common person, the person that doesn't really know anything about exercise, to go find information that isn't a sales pitch. Now, YouTube is kind of a sales pitch. I have a YouTube business that's a workout business, and we do provide free workouts that hopefully help people, that hopefully helps them get healthier. And we try to have that perspective that it's no sales pitch. On the YouTube channel, there's nothing that we're selling. You could just do the workout and then that's it. But is there easily accessible information to the masses that can help them? If you think about government-based sites, are they easy to digest? Is it something that someone can go find, easily find, click on a link, and they're going to get information? When I think about these things, I think about maybe the ACSM guidelines, which don't really provide insight. Things like Individuals should perform moderate to vigorous activity on most days. What does that even mean for the common person? If you're not a fit pro, do you know what that means? Do you know what vigorous activity means? Do you know what moderate activity means? Do you know if you even fit into that category? Where do you start? So is that really the best step for the individual is things to go licensure that potentially you get better instruction? Is that maybe a better step that we find better ways to get education to the masses that that can help them with the steps? That's not a sales pitch. That's not a sales pitch from a gym, a sales pitch from a instructor, an influencer, that it's maybe just information on here are some ways to start. Where are some ways that you should start if you fall into this category? Now, the second discussion episode that was released in October was about building a social media strategy. Now, this one is one that I hope you listen to because it's impactful, because hopefully you're going through that and you feel like there's a, a light at the end of the tunnel. And as I'm talking about it right now, I'm thinking about an instructor that I originally spoke with that recently joined Instagram and the struggles of learning this new platform. It's evolved in one year two years, three years, five years since it started, how much it's changed and what tends to get more views, get more engagement these days is evolved. It's changed and it's harder. It's much harder to create reels than anything, than videos, than photos. Reels take time. Good ones take time. The ones that are creative take time. So someone that's not familiar with social media, to jump into it and be told, oh, no, you need to make reels, you need to do this, this, and this. Whew, that's a lot. That is a lot to digest, to take in. And the piece of advice that I can give you before listening to this, and I'm going to say right now, is to go at your own pace. If all you feel comfortable with is sharing a photo, share a photo. If all you feel what's in your wheelhouse is making a short video, make that video and start from there. You don't have to go from zero to 100 right away. You don't have to go to beginner to advanced right off the bat because you'll probably become disheartened from it because it might not get views, might not get likes. And of course we want those things. We want those things because we're human beings. So in this episode, I talk about strategies. One of the ones that 
I really like to share about and I've talked about in conferences is called YouTube Center Digital Marketing. And I go into depth about it in this episode, but essentially it's a way to have a starting point for the content that you're creating. I'm a big fan of YouTube. As listeners will probably know that I have a YouTube-based business that does online workouts. And with YouTube, it gives you a starting point that if you have a, a business, and you can dissect this in multiple ways. You don't have to quite use it that way. Of course, you can use pieces of it. But if you run your own business and you're a fit pro and you're trying to grow your base across all platforms, this is a way to do it. It's a way to create content that starts in one place and be able to build a newsletter, be able to build a blog, be able to build your social media channels so that once you have a system, you can focus your energy into other areas, reels, stories, things like that, that Maybe you weren't as comfortable with at the beginning, but you get practice with these things. You get practice with social media platforms. You get practice with making videos, pulling photos, things like that. So that's talked about in this discussion episode. Link will be in the description. Let's listen to a clip right now. Now I've seen companies that I've consulted for that have a little bit of confusion with that aspect. They want to copy another company that they liked their post, but that's not what they sell. With Time to Train Fitness, with Kips, I stick within their realms. I'm going to use Time to Train Fitness as an example because I'm going to be even talking about filler posts later on in this episode. But there are elements in there that are just about health and fitness. We give a little taste of what the workouts are like. Okay, go find it. Here's where you find it. But also have filler posts in there. But it's all geared towards health and fitness. If I was to now use those same posts for Kips, the company that you're listening to the podcast for, it wouldn't make sense. We're not selling general fitness to the population. We're selling education, education to health and wellness professionals. So doing posts about working out, exercise, wellness, and general posts that are made for the general audience, they don't fit. And I see those posts all the time for even other educational companies out there right now. Right now, you can go on Twitter, you can go on Instagram, and you can see these posts, and you'll be like, well, okay, I may agree with that, but what does this have to do with this company? What does this have to do with your education? It doesn't have to do anything with it. And that's where you have to think, what is it that I'm selling? What is it that I want to get across? And it all stays within that realm. Along those same lines now is something that I already mentioned, and that is who is this post for? Having that person in your mind that this is who I want to hopefully buy it. Some, it might be general, and that's okay. I think that that's one of the things that we get caught up sometimes when we hear business gurus and people that are experts in marketing, experts in advertising, experts in social media, that they want you to have this very specific, this, this person that you know everything about them. But it's okay to have general, in my opinion, because he, everybody's different. Everybody has a different taste. They all have a different view on health and wellness, on education, on all these things. So why can't you create posts that maybe it's for a group of people? Maybe it's for a population, a profession. Keep those in mind. That has been it for this roundup episode of the Kips Podcast. Two discussion episodes that hopefully you go listen to and engage with. Drop a comment in our private members group on Facebook. Fitness Builder Plus, fit pros from across the globe are in there, and hopefully we can continue to build that community. I hope you enjoyed this episode and take that step to listen to more of the content, and I will see you in the next one. Hey, fit pros, it's your host, Tyler Valencia here. I quickly want to share a free resource we have on the KIPS website and YouTube channel. If you're struggling with your online workouts or just want to see the items that we recommend, check out our virtual training resources page. You'll find breakdowns on streaming setups, reviews on microphones, and other free videos that can help you build your fitness business today. Did I mention they're free? Go check them out at the link in the description or head over to our website to find them under the blog tab.